Thank you, Trend Micro, for sponsoring this video. So guys, there have been some developments recently that have made the iPad Pro a little more interesting than it has been for a while. So I thought it would be a good time for a solid list of apps for the iPad Pro. Here are some of my current favorites. Let's ramble. Hold up. Hey, what is up, guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. Right, now this first one might not be the most exciting one, but it is a very important tool in my daily workflow. I'm not a full-time content creator, and for my daytime business, a lot of documents go back and forth between myself and my clients. Most of those will be PDFs, so a solid PDF editor is an essential tool in my kit. My PDF editor of choice has been UPDF. Apart from the fact that it's a super solid product, you can also use it across platforms on Mac, Windows, iOS, and even Android if you own an Android with just one license. Of course, you can read and annotate PDFs, but it does much more than that. It has a really powerful editor, which to me personally is the most important feature. I've tried a lot of editors over the years, and usually it's the editing part where things get messy and they kind of move around when you don't want them to. UPDF is super clean. You just indicate where you want your text to go and what you would like to change, and everything stays exactly where it belongs. Of course, it also lets you fill out forms, which is another killer feature, no matter what business you're in. It has a super easy interface, just a few clean toolbars, and what you see is what you get, which is the way I like it. I like my apps clean and simple. It's really easy to organize pages if you need to change the order. And when you're done with a document, you can save it back as a PDF. You can install the free version and get the basic functions, which I did for a long time, or get a plan, which is a lot cheaper still than most other PDF editors out there. Plus, there's a link in the description with a substantial discount. I think it's like 50% off right now, so definitely check that out. Now guys, no matter what apps we install on our devices, there is one we can never forget, a solid security suite. And that's exactly what the sponsor of today's video, Trend Micro, has to offer. Between working or studying from home, working at coffee shops, shopping online, a large part of our lives these days take place online, and we need to protect ourselves from hackers, viruses and malware. I like to keep everything in one place, which is why I appreciate that Trent Micro's premium security suite is an all-in-one solution, offering maximum security, not only on our iPads, but across devices, including our PCs, our Macs, iOS, and Android devices. What I love about their iPad app is that it does all the work for you. You hit the scan button, it analyzes your device, and it tells you exactly which things need fixing. It will check your Wi-Fi connection, implements a fraud buster, helping to avoid scams, and a web guard, which blocks malicious and unwanted websites while browsing. One that I personally really like is the calendar guard, maybe because I got burned like that before. You know, when you get these suspicious looking links in your calendar, they might look like a meeting link, for instance, but when you click on them, you're in trouble and it's already too late. Calendar Guard is designed to detect these and protect us from those dangerous links. So guys, I would encourage you to try it out for yourself. There's a link in the description. And if you use the code PATRICK10, you will get 10% off your purchase. Right, back to the video. That I feel the need to learn those apps less and less. The background removal feature is fantastic, and now it even offers actual layers, which I often use to create that effect of having the text behind me. But lately, Canva stepped up its game even more by implementing AI features, which makes this a truly, truly impressive app, and a feature-rich one too. I mean, just watch this. I'm holding an iPhone in this photo, right? Well, what if we change that into an eggplant? Just brush over the area, type whatever you want to replace it with, and watch the magic unfold. I mean, it's not 100% perfect, but it's pretty darn impressive, right? Now, we can talk about creative apps and not mention two of Apple's newest additions, Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro. I mean, we've been asking, nay, begging for those apps to come to the iPad for years now, myself included. I dedicated entire videos to it and called the M2 iPad Pro an overpowered device, refusing to review it because there were no apps to actually take advantage of it. Well, they're finally here and I'm stoked. Now, it's a little too early to tell how good these apps really are, and I'm sure we will be seeing a lot of updates in the coming months, but for now, Final Cut looks pretty great from where I'm sitting. Don't expect a full port of the macOS version because it's definitely not that. This is more like a reimagining of the app specifically for the iPad, and it comes with some iPad-only features too, like the jog wheel, which is a very clever touch-based way to navigate the timeline. 
I'm looking forward to using this a lot more and do let me know in the comments if you're interested in seeing a deep dive into this app later. Logic Pro is to musicians what Final Cut is to video editors. If you wanna try your hand in some basic video editing, usually you'll try iMovie. It's Apple's free basic app, but if you wanna do more, you'll graduate to Final Cut Pro, which is basically iMovie on steroids. The same is true for Logic, which is what I consider to be the beefed up version of GarageBand. I wish I had more time to try it out. I have some equipment in my studio just aching to be used, but until I've spent some serious time with it, I will just have to give Logic an honorable mention in this list. Right, moving on to Notion. Ah, oh, Notion. I have a love-hate relationship with this app. I've been back and forth between it and other planner apps. As regulars to the channel probably know, I used to be an Evernote evangelist. I used it for more than a decade and I loved it. But I have to say that unfortunately, Evernote has not been able to innovate at all in recent years and its recent price hike that seemingly came out of nowhere was the nail in the coffin for me. The app is not worth what they're charging right now, so back to Notion it is. What I didn't like about Notion before is that I found myself tweaking it so much that I spent more time on building productivity systems than I did on actually being productive. So I made a promise to myself to keep things really simple this time, and so far it's working well for me. Plus, I really love the built-in AI functionality. It might not be the most advanced version, but it is right there and I don't need to leave Notion to use it. That is a big win for me. I use it to help me outline my scripts or at least, you know, get a rough version of an outline. And I like to use it to clean up my spelling and my grammar. Another staple in my app drawer is Notability. I love taking handwritten notes on my iPad and Notability is a super robust app for that. Clean, simple, and easy to use. But it has one feature that sets it apart from the competition. And that is that audio recordings are linked to your annotations. While playing audio, you can tap anything in a note to jump to that point of the recording. This is fantastic for lectures, for conferences, for business meetings. Oh, and annotations you add while playing the recording are also synced to that recording. 10 out of 10, still my favorite handwriting app out there. Another great way of making use of the Apple Pencil is Lightroom, which is the number one photo editing app on iPadOS in my opinion. There's just something about actually using your pencil to make adjustments to your images. I don't know what it is, but it somehow feels more precise. I don't know, you feel connected to the image. Coupled with that amazing display on the iPad Pro makes this an absolute winner for me. In terms of messaging, nothing beats Telegram for me. Not everybody owns an Apple device, so I do have a preference for cross-platform messaging apps, and Telegram has been my absolute favorite. Think of it as WhatsApp, but with a sense of humor. If you haven't tried it, definitely give it a go. We obviously can't do this list without mentioning at least one game, and the game I keep going back to is Grindstone. I don't have a lot of extra time, so I can't really get into very story-based games too often. Grindstone is one of those super fun games that you can just pick up, play for a bit, and pick it right up where you left off next time you play. You do need some willpower though, because this game is seriously addictive. Oh, and I love playing this with the Apple Pencil too. Now this last one is not technically an app, but I do need to give credit to Apple for universal control. It's been so useful for me to use my iPad in conjunction with my MacBook Pro and my studio display, especially the 12.9 inch iPad Pro really adds to my setup. I'm using this awesome new stand by Cooksiu to position it just right. By the way, let me know in the comments if you'd like a review on that thing as well. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it one of these. It really does make a difference. Subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.